And uh, the, the first matter that I will deal with is the uh, disposal of the mayoral Daimler. Uh, you have a written report in front of you. It just has a little mistake in the, in the background. Um, it refers to November 2006. I think the person preparing the report couldn't believe that it um, has been waiting since 1996. And so um, it... Uh, but you'll see from the previous resolutions recorded below that it was 1996. Oh, sorry. But in order to deal with this, we actually have to um, ex accept the supplementary report onto the agenda, as we always do with late items to the agenda. So would someone like to move um, uh, Pauline, seconded by Glenn, that... Um, that the report be received and considered at the annual plan meeting of the 25th of June 2014. I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. Carried. Um, and I would, personally, I would personally like to move that we agree to revoke the previous um, council meeting decision of the 27th of November 1996 and to approve the disposal of the mayoral Daimler by way of public auction with any proceeds directed towards the Christchurch Earthquake Mayoral Relief Fund. Uh, do I have a seconder for that? Tim Scandrit. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion on the motion? Um, I, I, I would like to place on record since we've got um, on live screening uh, we'll just start the auction now. <laughs> if you'd like to, if you'd like to, just sort of uh, zoom in on that, you can see yeah, that it's, it's actually a very, very, it's a very beautiful car. So um, prestigious, prestigious, yes, and uh, so so um, it has a unique history. Highly um, connectable. And I think Vicky Buck was the mayor when it broke down when we had a royal <laughs> visit. So uh, there is a lot of history associated with it, but. It was between jobs, okay. So, but the point, the point about this is, is that, um, that it is an opportunity for uh, some generous person out there to say this is an opportunity to add to the, um, to the, to the Christchurch Earthquake Mayoral Relief Fund and actually make a contribution to assisting us um, as we recover uh, from our disaster, but at the same time, I think, um, dispose of something that we no longer need for any purpose. No, I disagree. It's a huge sacrifice. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I think it might have been. Yeah. I don't think we made Daimlers here. Um, <laughs> so, um, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you very much. Um, and now, if we could have, there was a, um, another item that I wanted to deal with just quickly, but it doesn't seem to be here. Um, so where are we up to? Right. Okay. Um, okay. Well. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, pass these around and I'm going to permit the use of selfies. Um, so I just met with Grant one and do a selfie with it and tweet it to hashtag wish you were here chicha. So I just met with um, Julia Holden over the lunch break who's an artist who's um, uh, painted these wonderful um, pictures of Christchurch um, as it is today. And uh, although some of the paintings are now out of date because they, um, some of the buildings have since come down, but um, they are a record of history. And she is displaying these as part of, um, you know, just reminding the rest of New Zealand. So they've been displayed as billboards, four of them up in Auckland. And she is now in the process of fundraising to bring them down to Wellington um, to display them there. She has sites available for them. Uh, and she wants to start a bit of a campaign around, around these um, phantom billboards, printed um, 20,000 of these postcards. So um, I'm recommending that you keep these postcards once you have tweeted them, and then you also uh, mail them out to someone else and get them to tweet them as well. So um, that's, um, and of those of you, I, don't, I think everyone's on social media here, so we should be able to do that. Um, but I thought that the, the, this was a, a, a good opportunity. David's on um, Facebook, so if you can't, if you, 
If you can't, tw if you can't tweet, <laughs> if you can't tweet, you can Facebook. <laughs> Paul. Uh, Julia, actually, uh, I'd spoken to Julia a wee while back, and there is an opportunity for us to also display some of the originals actually in our, in our foyer, and, and I think that would be a great way of also supporting the campaign. I think so too. So, I mean, when we get, when we get to that, um, that point, I, I also agree that we should be doing more to encourage uh, some of the wonderful contributions that artists make to the uplift of our city, and, uh, and I just think that she's... She's, she's captured um, a, a, a series of images that have, um, that, you know, the thing is, is that because we all know the background to them, we know that there is some sadness in them, but I didn't feel sad when I looked at them. She, she's captured them beautifully, and I, I think that there's, um, there's, there's a lot that our artistic people and creative people can offer in terms of our recovery. And I see that um, Councillor Cotter is, in fact, selfieing with the Daimler at the same time. <laughs> well, do we have a first offer? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Anyway, so um, so that that was um, that was as an aside and not an official part of our agenda. But I thought it was a wonderful opportunity while we were all sitting around the table to give some publicity to a fantastic idea that. Uh, that, that is happening in our own very city. So thank you very much. It is on the back of the postcard. So hashtag wish you were here, Chicha. Hashtag wish you were here, Chicha. Right, so um, Peter, back to you. Is your microphone on? Oh, mine wasn't either. <laughs> uh, I'd like to go oh, to was. Appendix B for a start. So over the lunch break, we've um, run through the changes uh, to see where, where things landed. Uh, and so I'd like to update you on that. Um, also have a general comment around some of the background. Um, if it's possible to focus on the um, A through D columns and uh, just expand it a bit, please. Yep. Um, so what we have here is the starting point of the 6.5%. Uh, we moved through, and what we've done is we've captured within here the, uh, the recommendations within the appendices, uh, Mayor's recommendations within A and F, and captured the ones that have been agreed to. Uh, so for instance, under the flooding remissions, um, you can see that that's now at the net level of 160 or 0 0.05 uh, Temple, Temple, Templeton Pool. Uh, tram proposal, head-to-head -head walkway and rec recreation centre hours um, flowing through. The other changes that we've um, discussed this morning, the Historic Places Fund reduction, the Wainui Sewer Project budget reduction, the CSAR Christchurch publication, ceasing the banner changes for one year, the Awatea route upgrade brought forward, the library opening hours back to existing, and the 2013 forecast operating deficit. And you'll notice that in that operating deficit, is that number up? The, um, that has decreased to four million. So the over lunch, um, looking around to see how that is currently looking at this stage, um, has changed somewhat from when we submitted the paper on Thursday. We have some greater specificity about the reasonableness of an accrual from NZTA, which I'm um, willing to um, be prudent around and accept at this point. Um, however, there is still a lot of uncertainty. That's only a forecast, so uh, it's around that figure. That brings us to a recommended final 2014-15 annual plan rates impact, GST exclusive, of 351,831,000, or a rates increase um, of 7.48%. Um, now, I did look back and refer to the, the three-year plan. Uh, and it appears that in the three-year plan for that second year, we were looking at 356.8 million of, of rates revenue. So it is actually five million less than the rates set out in the second year of the, the three-year plan. So that is, that is appendice B. Um, I'd like now, if we can manage the technology, to go back to the background um, of the paper, because the background context has now changed I'd like to explicitly um, bring that to the attention. So from the annual plan report, 
um, that was circulated on Wednesday. We had the um, purpose, and, and you'll remember the, uh, that I walked through the, the background and the appendices in some detail. I don't intend to do that again. Um, but what I did want to do is um, just point out that we have followed uh, uh, the appropriate processes um, that were in line with uh, the Local Government Act, and particularly moving on to um, page four. Note that section um, 100, subsection one, the Local Government Act requires us to set each year's operating level, level revenue, sorry, at a level sufficient to meet operating expenses, i.e. balance the budget. I believe we've achieved that objective with what we have here. And um, for the 2014-15 year, that means the council must either borrow or fund the deficit. Now, the change I want to bring out here is it's proposed that the operating deficit be offset by one-off increase, so that no longer features within the um, within the table, within Appendix EB, and uh, isn't captured by the resolution. We noticed that it wasn't captured by the resolution anyway. So I just wanted to point out that that is now included within the general. It's not a specific, um, strictly one-off basis. So the next point, if adopted by council, this would leave the overall rates increase to existing rate payers for 2014-15 at 7.48%, with Thank the you. details set out in the, the new appendices B and C. So thank you for your forbearance on, on that. Um, what we do now is we now work through, I understand, the, the adoption of the 2014-15 um, annual plan, and in particular uh, from um, the staff recommendation working through the, the council uh, resolutions. But um, Peter Mitchell might want to guide us on the, the manner in which we work through those. Okay, well, we, we, yeah, okay, we can put them individually. So um, the first one is the, is the uniform one, which brings together Appendix A and F, um, and it's already been moved and seconded. So, um, but do we, do we have to do them separately, or is it normal policy to do them separately? Okay. Does anyone feel that we have to go through them individually, or do people mind if we just put them as a single package? Yeah. A and F. That no. That they are, they are. So we're we're we're. Um, no, no, no. Appendix B is the new form of Appendix B. So we've got the mayor's recommendations are set out in, in Appendix A and F. So um, the resolution that we have in front of us, yeah, and we need to make a change to Appendix D. So, um, and we've just we've just accepted the changes to Appendix B. So that's now changed. Do, do we? Does that need to be recorded separately that we've accepted these as a whole? If you, if, you, if you do the change... Oh, let, let, let's do them one at a time. OK, so... Um, so, would someone like to move the first of these bullet points? I mean, then we'll put the whole lot together at the end. So, Tim Scandrett moves the first one, and it is seconded by Andrew Turner. Um, and so that's the Mayor's recommendations are set out in Appendix A and F are adopted. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. The second one is the financial changes to the draft annual plan set out in substituted Appendix B. So... OK. So... Um, but is that OK just to add the word substituted Appendix B? Yes. So can we add in the word substituted? Um, so who will move that? Um, David East, seconded Phil Clearwater. I'll put that motion. Oh. Yep. Given that we've just got the figures back, and given that we had a lot of, you know, probably the one contentious one was around the banner chart changes, and given that we're 
7.48, and that that's 0 0.02. I, I just wondered whether we'd consider putting some actually back into that. No, I thought the goal was to get to 7.5. We've got the financials, and it seems to me, for the sake of having a division over that, we actually have got extra funding that we might be able to put. They're not confirmed, though, though. If I, if I was right, Peter, of what you were saying is there may be a wee bit of movement in the, the figures. That the the forecast is always just a forecast. It's not. It's exactly. not actual. So there is a degree of um, you know which way will it go up or down. Um, the the point that Councillor Johansson is one that's that's open to you. The implication for us is um, simply running away and, and doing the, the decimals again. So we wouldn't be doing that right here and now. We'd need to uh, just a process timing issue. I, I, yeah, I, look, I'd like to second what Yanni's saying. I, I mean, um, we've signalled earlier on that we would be, if we left it in, in the budget, we would still work to actually try and achieve sponsorship or other funding models to bring it to bring that cost down. And I think it just uh, sends a clear signal to our young people that we do care about Christmas for them. And, and I just think it's I, I can't accept the amendment. I can't because we already debated on it. We had a vote on it, um, it wasn't unanimously accepted, um, and I can't put the motion again, it's just simply, um, it's, it's, it's not appropriate. So, um, you know, it's, uh, my hands are tied in that regard, so, um, so I'm going to um, put the motion as it is, um, so all those in favour say aye, aye. those opposed say no. That's carried. And then I'm told that um, Appendix F, we've already done that, haven't we? Yeah, but, but the next one is Appendix F. It's already been done, so remove that. Um, so the next one is Appendix D. The minor changes and corrections to errors set out in Appendix D. Um, actually, did we include the 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 rates one and the and the? Um, there was the fees the, change the, one from the, the building control area. Yeah, the fees change one, but also the one that Yani gave before lunch. Are we able to? The Burnside one? Um, so that was um, not a rates change, that was um, bringing our attention to a submission um, issue that got missed out of the printed copy, so we do have a response um, to that submission. Um, that submission response does not uh, recommend a, a change as I, as I understand it, so um, based on that, unless there was a, a recommendation uh, to change and it wouldn't have a rates impact. Um, could I just speak to it, um, Leanne? The, I don't think there's a rates impact anyway because these guys were going to walk away from using this space unless we changed the rules. I thought their submission was actually very compelling and very sensible, and I had no difficulty with accepting it. So I'm not keen to go back to them and say, no way. But if it doesn't have an impact on the... Doesn't. On, on the... Um, on the annual plan, this is not the right way to change No, this fees. won't have an impact on the so, annual plan. So what we need to do, no, we need to refer this for a report and to ask for a report to come to Council so that we can make a decision on it. Hey, um, we're, we're, we're being asked to adopt a schedule of fees and charges today. We've had a submission that says, in adopting this, this, this schedule of fees and charges, we think you should add an additional category. This is perfectly reasonable to do it as this time, at this time. It is standard practice to do it. Uh, can I just... So, uh, I mean, look, and I, I defer to your um, much greater experience than mine, but to change the philosophy behind why um, a particular approach is taken with the representative sporting code as opposed to individual clubs, I'd actually like to know um, a little bit more about that and I want to um, have a direct staff to um, prepare a report and bring it back with us. I mean, I think they're going to get the, the um, you know, the, the issue in front of us as relatively as quickly as possible. 
And then we can make a, a, a decision based on the issue rather than on creating another category, which is actually undermining the, 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 the principle that the council's already established. I don't know whether this has got any validity or not. I mean, I mean the council position, and I'd like to know that before I vote on it. So um, I'm just going to. Um, so this is a, as I'm just going to move something quite separate here. So if you could write up another resolution, um, that submission one one six one eight, Burnside Rugby Football Club, be referred to. Um, parks, open spaces and waterways, is that the name of the department? Or is that the section? Or, or should we refer it to, to, to the Chief Operating Officer? To refer to the Chief Operating Officer and ask for a report back to Council directly by... Jane, I'm looking at you. How long do you want? OK. By the end of July? Yeah, by the end of July. Anyone second that? Um, Tim, I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. And the, um, the next one is to um, move um, the amendments that um, Dave East has in relation, or have they been written into the have they been written in? No, no they will need to be. Um, they need to be added. OK, so, do, so um, Dave East moves. And who seconds? Yep. And who's seconding that for? Uh, Glenn Livingston. So I'll put that amendment. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. And then we move on to that um, appendix D, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so who will move um, that the um, amendments to fees and... C or D? Where are we? Sorry, I've, I'm lost. Where are the minor changes? Where's that gone? Why are the minor changes not there? It was up there before. So where, where's the um, where, where did the other resolution go? The okay, but where's the um, the one that we've just done for David East? That's in there. That's all there. Cool. And so who will move that the minor changes? We have we. Did we get a mover and a seconder for that? David and Glenn. So you, you, well, you might as well do the second one as well. So this is this other one. So are there any things in the minor changes and corrections that need to be drawn to our attention? All straightforward. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. And then we need to go back to setting the... So it's the schedule of rates set out in Appendix C be adopted, and those those rates have now been amended, haven't they? Yep. So who will move that?
The general answer is, is yes. However, under um, Appendix C, you'll also see where the uniform annual general charges come in. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Tim Scandra seconded Paul Lonsdale. I'll put that. Phil? Could I just have a clarification about the uniform uh, annual charge? So I'm assuming that the additional 1.27% hasn't been added to that. I just want to clarify that. No, no, no. We, we, we're not doing the 1.27% separate anyway. Um, so we're, we're um, passing a rate of 7.48% and the um, uniform annual charge has not changed. No, the changes that we have made under Appendix B, A and F today have not impacted on the um, uniform charge or unit charges. Yeah. They've only impacted on general rates and that's all. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Um, and that then should bring us to the, okay, no the full resolution of the... Is that right? Yeah. No, no, yeah. Yeah. 